Chefs, while well, we had some amazing food today, there were a couple of dishes that fell short. And those were Karen and Giselle's dish, as well as Philip and Kwame's dish. Everyone else step to the side, please. <laughs> Just when I thought it was good. I think you're safe. <laughs> you never know. Kwame, we loved the tomato and eggplant relish. You're not going home, but we want to find out exactly what happened with this dish. Well, after everybody had kind of partnered up, nobody had chosen to do like a main beef. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do steak and potatoes. And I said, I'm gonna do the potato, think of it as a sauce. Let's do, like come up with a, like a great kind of vegetable driven garnish. That was what Kwame was gonna do. I don't think that's how the dish was described to the team. I think that everybody understood it to be that you were doing a potato that would eat like mashed potatoes. You never once mentioned that it had a sauce. Potato, butter, cream, salt, pepper. That's all the ingredients that are gonna taste like mashed potatoes. We should make some sort of veg kind of sauce for the steak. You wanna rock that? Yeah, I'll rock that. It had exactly what I was looking for when I explained the dish. You described tomato. it as mashed potatoes. You In did. the form of whipped cream. You said mashed potatoes. We'll cut to the chase here. I mean, what we didn't care about the dish was the potato. It was more cream than, than potato. We got steak and some cream. OK, Karen and Giselle, we wanted to use asparagus and bring in some black garlic in the eggplant. You made the asparagus? I did. OK, who made the grains? She cooked them. I, I finished them. OK, and mushrooms? I did. The problem I had was, was, was really seasoning um, and cooking. The asparagus was undercooked, farro was bland, and I found the mushrooms to be kind of soggy. They're not my flavor profiles, so I really did feel like the Sue in this, but... I know that you say that these are not your flavors and you didn't understand the dish, but I found it hard to collaborate because you just kept saying, I don't know, or maybe this, or I'll do whatever you want. I'm not gonna step over Karen. I, I'm, you are I, here to be competing for Top Chef. At least I was trying. I think you guys needed to be more clear about what you were collectively doing. Um, I understand. I agree. I think that it's more important I don't know how to say this without. Just speak your mind. Say it. I think it's shocking that Philip doesn't recognize his flaws. I think Karen and I stand here understanding that we could have done much better, which makes us much stronger. When I made him the ISI, and he goes, that's a little gummy, dude, and I was like, that's what I'm looking for. You're looking for improper technique? So I don't know that that's necessarily a flaw. That's what I was going for. OK. You were going for something we didn't care for. OK, thank you all. We have a very difficult decision to make. We'll call you back. Kwame West. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you, I really it. I've made peace whether I'm here or not. Like right now, if they send me home, at least I got to say everything I wanted to say. It's like, it's, you don't get to call that Yeah, but don't you think it day. should be accurate to what happens? I mean. What do you mean? <laughs> like the story that you were painting, if nobody had said anything, was very different than what actually happened. I don't and, think so. Okay. okay. You don't have to believe me. This guy is completely delusional. I got the ISI exactly how I want it, and my steaks cooked nicely. Philip. Shut up. No, really, shut up. 